Hi there and welcome to Darlene's Creative Studio. Today I am just playing with some scraps um, from some of my scrap bins. I thought I would turn on the camera while I was playing along and uh, show you what I'm working on. So I keep in this little plastic bin all the leftovers from my tea stained papers when I'm making my journals. These are all the end cutoffs, um, the bottom portion of the pages when I cut them to fit into my journals. And as I was sorting and cleaning through my studio, which is a great inspiration, creative motivator, is to start cleaning out a bin or something in your room and you will find something in a bin somewhere and you'll think, oh yeah, I wanted to make something with that. So this is what I've been doing. I've been rearranging my studio space, um, trying to get it set up so I can work a little better. And I came across this bin and remembered that I like to make these little tiny booklets from my leftover scrap tea stain pages. And I like to send them in my orders uh, as thank you gifts or to my pen pals. And I like to send them little booklets to my grandkids. So that's kind of what I'm working on. It kind of started me on that little roll. And what I do is I just take the pages and cut them down. Either fold them in half or I will cut them and then fold this leftover piece in half. It just depends on the size of the book I wanted. So this one, I'm just going to close this bin out of the way. Oops. So what I was doing was just quickly measuring the page. This is about seven inches. So I think I was taking about a two and a quarter inch piece. So I'm just going to say there, I usually measure them. And I was cutting it and then taking this leftover piece and folding it in half as well and then just sticking them inside each other. Oh, look at that, I mean, right dead on there. Now that doesn't happen when you're on camera. <laughs> anyway, so I've been taking all my little scraps and cutting them into this size. And then um, I just grabbed some of the cardstock that I had on hand. Um, I purchased some when I was in Florida it was on sale and it was really colorful and it is really heavy duty cardstock. This is really thick stuff. I didn't realize it was that thick, but it's great. So, so I just sliced them and diced them and made some covers for some of our little booklets. So I just cut them and scored them and then they make little covers for the booklets. And again, because we are at home, it's a stay at home Thing, locked down if you will I've been using everything that I have on hand I don't want to purchase anything um, we're trying to save some money so this is what I've been doing and so I just sat there last night while I was watching TV with my husband and I cut the, all my scrap papers down all my tea stain pages down and I have some that are lined some that are blank and some that are actually just the photocopy paper uh, but that's what I was working on and so I ended up with this little tray here of cut down pieces and I've been working on them this morning so I thought I would just keep going as I was working on them and that to follow along so these are just blank pages I think they were lightly lined but when I tea stained them the lines disappeared um, so all I did was again they're they're rough they're not perfect on the edges and I've just put eight pages together so that will give you 16 on this side and 16 on this side. That gives you 32 pages. And I thought these would make great little booklets for a month. So you can get 31 days in here. Um, and what I thought I would do is make a whole bunch and make them into something like a gratitude journal or a creative journal. Um, do something creative every day and you can write down what you've done or you can draw a picture. Um, you can use them for whatever you like. Uh, you could use them for Bible verses whatever you like but these were just scraps and I'm going to get my little number stamps and I'm going to stamp the day on each of these pages. Um, my inspiration was from this little paper pad that I got in um, my monthly box, Your Creative Studio, Studio monthly box and they have these little, lovely little pictures on them and then um, a, a definition or something and then it had a number on them. <laughs> 
and I pulled the, I opened it up and the pages all came out because the glue didn't stick, but they were all together. So I set them somewhere and do you think I can find them? They are somewhere in my nice tidy studio in a drawer somewhere and I can't find them. But this was the inspiration or the idea. Um, I came across the, the cover of this little pad um, for putting something on each day, a number, and then I was going to do 12 of them. And then for a whole year, just try and keep myself creative every day for a whole year. Um, so I've taken the pages and I put eight strips, it gives you 32 pages on either side, and I put them in there. I like to um, make sure my fold is nice and tight. So I just give it a quick fold like that and put that inside. And then I take my ruler and my sharp knife. And again, um, when cutting with a sharp knife, an X-Acto knife, anything, always change your blade when you're starting to cut with thinner paper. Once the blade gets dull and you've used it a couple of times, it will tear the paper. So I put a brand new blade in my knife this morning just so that I can keep my pages nice and trim. And you will start to see it. It'll just start to pull on your paper and you'll see a little ripple in your paper and you'll know that your blade is getting dull. So these are one of my favorite, favorite tools. My father actually was a handyman and he had always had one of these husky knives type things wherever he went. He always had one in his pocket or on his workbench and he insisted all three of my sisters and I use one of these knives or have it handy in your home. You'll always grab it and I do. I don't go anywhere without one of these knives. And when I was in Florida at Harbor Freight, they have little tiny mini ones and I keep that in my travel kit and I keep the little blades with it. But I use this knife all the time. It's like an X-Acto knife, but better. Um, so I use that and then what I do is I just get a little binder clip and I just kind of put it in there to hold it close. Now this one looks like the paper might be a little taller. So I'm just gonna trim that little bit off. And it doesn't take more than a couple of pulls on a sharp knife to get those pages cut. And there you go. So that's what I'm doing for these. And then I have these washi tapes as well from my monthly studio pack. Um, these came at different months. This one looks like brown leaves or parchment. And this one is supposed to be maps. It's Because washi tape is so thin, you can't really see, but it's supposed to be maps. I think there's even a little lighthouse. Oh, there's a little ship. You can barely see them though. There's a little lighthouse. Um, so I'm taking some of this washi tape. I can get a hold of it. There we go. And I'm just ripping off a little piece. And I'm just kind of sticking it on to the front covers of my books, the front and the back. I'm trying to use up stuff that I have and this is the best way to do it. And then we'll put that one up there, like that. And I'm going to be decorating these covers. So this is some of the ones that I've gotten done so far. These are the larger ones. And then with the green one, I've used this lighter page, um, tape, sorry, washi tape. And it just gives it a nice little effect. And then I'm going to collage something on the fronts of these. And I've been going through my, so these are all my larger ones. I also have some smaller ones that I'm working with. And these are just the photocopy paper. And it's a thicker, I think it's 24 pound photocopy paper. I just find it holds up a little better when tea staining. And again, we're just making sure all the pages are nice and tight in there. I'm going to set it inside my little booklet. Grab my ruler and trim those edges. Go. And I'm using a cutting mat. This knife is fine with a cutting mat um, underneath. Like that and then I'm just going to put a little binder clip on there and I'm using this green washi tape and it's just like a little you can use any of the washi tapes that you have on hand I just find it adds a little bit of something and I'm going to try and find um, some things to collage the fronts with I have tons of these washi stickers that I've gotten in my kits as well 
Um, so you can use washi sti stickers, you can use paper. Um, these are some of the stickers that I have received in my kits. I've also made these little postage stamps um, during my January challenge. You can put something like that on the front. Um, this is also a great time to go through some of your books and do some fussy cutting. You know, sit down and watch a show and just sit and cut out some of your little things out of some of your books. Here's some butterflies and stuff so I can use fussy cuts on the front. Oh, there's that little doggy. Isn't he cute? Um, you could put something like that and collage a little bit more. I also have these. This is from one of my monthly mail outs. Um, these are just like little cards and receipts and tickets. You could use something like that maybe on one of the larger ones. So just decorate them any way you like. Um, and I am going to stamp numbers on each and every page. I also have this out of the way. This is um, a book I made from an old book cover and it holds my postage stamps. This is just cardstock with one of those little plastic, I think I had pages of, and they hold the little um, business cards or AT trading cards. Um, and these were a whole sheet of them and I've just cut them across in so that there's two and then I've sewn them onto the pages. And what you can do is put your full envelope of stickers behind in the full because I've made it just a pocket. And then it has two smaller pockets on the front here. And that's where I would put a sample of what's in the bag behind. So these are my um, tree stickers. These are animal stickers. These are Christmas stickers, birds. So I would put a little bird stamp on the front so that I know what's in that, that pocket in the back. I haven't um, fully sorted these. I've just kind of thrown things in. But these are what I'm thinking I might use for the fronts of these. I ordered these uh, butterfly postage stamps online and I thought these might look nice on the fronts of some of these little booklets. Now I might put something behind it like a little piece of fabric or some tea stain paper just to make them stand out a little bit more. But I was thinking I would use up some of these because I did, did receive, I think there's 200 in this envelope so so I can use those and then there's some smaller ones I can use for the smaller ones as well. But I think I'm going to do butterflies on the fronts of these as well just to use up what I have in my stash of goodies. So there's a smaller one I can use. See? Oops, upside down. So again, use what you have. Um, if you start going through a bin, um, I have a couple of ephemera bins sitting here that um, I just throw things in as I get them. I want to go through them and just pull out and it'll give me some, oops, forgot to put those in, uh, give me some ideas uh, of little projects that you might want to try. So I'll use these um, butterflies on the fronts and again I will get my little number stamps. I have a little set of number stamps um, and if I find these <laughs> little um, booklets that I had taken out, I've set them somewhere safe. I'll come across them, I know I will. Um, but again, something like that, that was the inspiration for these little booklets. And if you do 12 of these little booklets up, they won't take up any, any room at all. You could actually have a whole year's worth of these little books and maybe make a little box out of cardstock and just slide them in. And you can have a whole year's worth of these, I said month, a whole year's worth of these little booklets. And, and each one could have something for each month. So. That's what I'm working on. I like to give these as thank you gifts as well when somebody places an Etsy order or I send them off to my pen pals. I'm going to do up a couple and send them off to my grandkids and give them something to keep writing and journaling about. Something good that they did every day. Something Maybe something they did for their mom or something kind, a random act of kindness or something like that so that they can keep a little journal while they are staying home from school. So I wanted to share the covers of the little mini notebooks. This is how far I've gotten with them. So I have just stamped, put the washi tape is on there and then I've stamped it with just a rubber stamp in the background, added a postage stamp 
and another little postage stamp. And then I've gone through the books and I've just added the month. Now this is the only one that I did backwards, but um, the first page is just the monthly page. And then I went ahead and punched the numbers for the month. And then what I'm going to do is take each one. So January, March, April. So I'm going to start in April. I, oops, I'm going to start in April. And there's my April book, and then it's got all the dates in it. So this is going to be, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use them for, whether it's um, writing down what I do creatively, or drawing, or writing down ideas. I'm just going to call it my creative, little mini creative books, just to keep me going creatively. Um, I'm going to decorate at the beginning of April. I'll decorate the page. I'll distress some of the pages, maybe stencil them. Uh, but that's what I'm going to work on. Each day I will work on a page, distress it, and then write something in the book itself. And I'm going to do something perhaps on the inside covers, maybe put a little envelope or something like that. But each month I'm going to work on one little notebook. And I've done all of them. I'm just going to flatten them so you can see. Um, adding the tape and adding the butterfly stamps, poster stamps that I have. Um, I've been following a lady that does something. She tried something for 100 days doing... I think it was drawing for 100 days and then she kept going for 200 and now she draws every single day. So I'm trying to get myself motivated to do something. I don't, you know, whether it's sorting through a bin or something, but keeping myself creative every single day and trying to use up some of the stuff that I have already in my office, in my studio space. Um, I have a lot of stuff, like I'm sure all of us do, that we collect stuff and collect stuff and collect stuff and then we just save it. Um, so I'm going to try and use up as much of the stuff that I have and this is how I'm going to do it by doing something creative every day. So I just wanted to share with you, um, these were the larger ones. I have not finished the smaller ones. I might think I might do these ones individually and make them smaller. I'm going to make some for my grandkids. Uh, I think I'm going to use the bigger pieces. I have a couple more big ones here. Uh, I think I'm going to make something up for my grandkids and stamp it for the month of April and let them fill it out for April, what they did each day in April. Something just to keep them motivated and I know my daughter's got a little schedule going for them and they've got to do their schoolwork and something creative every day so that might help as well. So I'll get those out in the mail to them. Um, we may go and dro drop off some Easter goodies. So that is what I, my finished little mini journals using scrap paper, things that I had on hand and just creating something. So I hope you enjoyed that and watch for my um, favorite tools video coming up real soon. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to my channel.